exploration of my current state, which is wonderfully all over the place. I don't have it all together, though I better by the time I'm 18. <laughs> Since I was a kid, I've been intrigued with fabricating a life I want to live. I've been working towards this on many levels, mentally and emotionally, but also physically. For the past few years, I've been obsessed with the dream of creating not just a house, but a home. I've immersed myself in this project, and I'm building my tiny house exactly how I imagine it. There's a story and a connection behind everything in it or on it. That is what life should be like. We've become so disconnected from our immediate world that surrounds us. Be it our homes, made with maintenance-free materials, manufactured in some unknown location, or be it our communities, where communication has too often shrunk to Facebook or texting. And so I began to observe my world and wonder, where did this table, this chair, this shoe come from? What are their stories? Who is that person who lives down the street? What is their story? I recently went to a talk Ross Chapin did on wholeness. And the main thing I came away with was that the best thing you can do for yourself, your community, and the world is to follow your passions. And by diving into that pool, your ripples will inspire others to do the same. Thus creating an inspired, fulfilling life, a diverse community, and many wonderful stories. Some of you may have read the recent article in the South Movie Record on the tiny house that I'm building. It was a beautiful article, very well done. The title was, South Woodby Team Builds Tiny Transportable House. <laughs> but at the time of the article, all I had even related to the house was this. <laughs> I mean, it could have been titled, South Movie Teen Acquires Rusty Trailer Check. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, what I had was an idea that I was and still am very passionate about. And as I work towards it, the interest it generates is incredible. Many generous people in our community have given me their time, shop space, knowledge, and materials. And you may recognize some of these characters. I say that with affection. But without them, I wouldn't be even close to where I am now. And I thank them. One of the main reasons I've been able to follow my passions and focus my energy on the things I love is I have chosen to unschool myself. I use the word unschool to explain to our culture that I learned through life experience. I do nothing related to the public school system at the moment. Instead, I'm creating a life for myself, where learning isn't work, and work wears play clothes. I am deep in my interests and the ripple effect as a parent. Example, I was asked to do this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I have discovered that money is not the limiting factor when it comes to transforming dreams into realities. In fact, in my experience, it is often the limitations which aid creativity. Though this is not necessarily the most comfortable path, it has pushed me further than I ever would have gone. Here's an image to solidify that idea. I spent six months in Europe with my dad and sister. We traveled with very loose plans, staying in 50 homes in 17 countries, and teaching dance in schools. Our experiences were extraordinary. One of the many wonderful examples is we ended up rowing, a boat, 22 miles through the Grand Canals and around the perimeter of Venice, Italy, with some Hungarian friends and 2,000 other boats from around the world. Our six months in Europe cost less than renting a house and living under the island. And my learnings were profound. Some of you may know my dad, Walter, because he's who I live and work with. But I'd also like to acknowledge my mom and all she has done for me. She lives in a nursing home in Port Townsend with multiple sclerosis and has taught me 
the art and gentle strength. She has shown me that your time here in this functioning body may be short. So waste none of it and do what you love. My problem now is I love so many things. <laughs> but finding a way to do them all has proven mentality. I want to be a portrait photographer, a dance teacher, a natural cosmetics chemist, a chef, a farmer, and for a long time an architect. After one wonderful evening with a group of aspiring designers where we philosophized about life and design, I was sitting in my kitchen with my dad, eating leftover savory sweet potato waffles and talking about the future. And I said, Daddy, I don't want to be an architect. I want to be a designer of life. I want everything I do to be beautiful. I have one more quick story to share. Through a set of serendipitous circumstances, I have recently become an Armenian shoemaker's apprentice. <laughs> and through complex processes, I am learning to transform leather into functional works of art. I'm wearing my first pair. Thank <laughs> you.